Uh, welcome everyone on the video stream. Um, before we start, I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Orlin. Um, my US folks call me Orlix. Maybe it's a bit easier for everyone. Uh, I have two kids. Uh, I'm CNCF ambassador, so I'm very involved in the whole ecosystem of uh, CNCF stuff. For the last 20 years, uh, I was sysadmin, DevOps, you name it, and for the last one year, I decided to take a turn and become a community manager. Um, so also I'm a DIY person, maybe that roots it back to the open source stuff. And, and, and another thing, uh, I'm part of the KubeCon program community, so if you're submitting something for, for KubeCon, most probably I'll be one of the folks who is gonna review that. So <laughs> with that, um, Scott. Yeah, and my name is Scott Siegel. I'm a um, principal software engineer at Red Hat. I've been at Red Hat uh, for 20 years now. Um, and then I've been involved in the um, Blair community since 2019. And I've been a maintainer for the project um, since last year. Um, previously worked on other projects, um, um, OpenStack, uh, Java-based projects, various things over the years. Um, but I'm pretty much full-time on OpenShift, Kubernetes, Valera-related projects at this point. So um, that's the agenda for today. What we're going to do is I'm going to talk about, about a little bit about Valero and what's Valero, what kind of, what kind of problems it solves. Then Scott is going to do a demo, and then we're going to do a little bit of roadmap and, and release. Then I'm going to talk about community, and then I hope we'll have some time for uh, Q&A. So uh, I forgot to mention I'm a huge fan of barbecue. So when our talk was accepted here, I was super enthusiastic and super, super excited. But also, I have a very special thing to say. My little boy, this folk over there, is turning four right now, went back home in Bulgaria, so. <laughs> it's, uh, it's emotional. Also, I'm first time speaker here, Scott as well, so please yes. bear with us. Okay, so let's go. Um, okay, so Valero 101. Um, Valero was uh, initially called Arc, and it was released uh, back in 2017 by the Heptio folks. Then, you know the story, VMware acquired Heptio, and somewhere in like uh, mid-2019, uh, uh, it was decided to be renamed to uh, Valero. So what's Valero? Valero is a backup tool which allows you to backup your resources and data on your Kubernetes clusters. So Valero solves mainly three major problems. Um, disaster recovery, which is, for example, some with fat fingers can delete the namespace, and if you have a backup, uh, you can, we can uh, restore. Yeah, you can redeploy, but that will not bring your data back. So Valero is here to help. Data, data migration is um, the case when you want to migrate from one Kubernetes cluster to another, for example, from one cloud provider to another, or, yeah, or from on-prem to cloud, whatever. And then da data protection, it's uh, the third portion of the solution. Um, if you have data corruption, you can restore the data uh, through Valero, so it can save your business. So um, what's Valero and how it's working? Valero is um, client and, and server-side kind of solution, so we have Valero uh, as a deployment running in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, when you deploy Valero, uh, it will extend your API, so you're gonna apply a bunch of CRDs on top of Kubernetes. Um, and a few examples are backup and restore. Uh, so you, you work at the end, you work with um, Kubernetes native resources, so you can do kubectl get backups, for example. Um, every single instance of Valero, uh, or every installation of Valero, uh, needs a place to store the backups. And the case that we choose to, to do is like to, to store some object storage, for example, S3 bucket or Minio, something S3 compatible where you can store um, the backups and the data if, if you decide to do that. And then we have hooks, uh, which are a, a possibility to modify and customize the, the process of backup. So if you, if you wanna execute a backup and you need to perform something in the very beginning, for example, to freeze the file system, if you're gonna back up a database, you can, that, you can do, do that through the hooks and then you can do some syncing in the end like post hooks. I forgot to ask, how many of you have used Valero before? Okay, and how many are hearing about Valero for the first time? Good, 
we have swag for you. <laughs> so I, we brought some, some t-shirts and, and some stickers, so please, after that, if you're interested, come and pick some. Uh, so that's the workflow overall, um, and I'm gonna describe it in the next thing, which is the COI. So Valero ships with COI, which integrates with kubectl. You can do a lot of the stuff only with kubectl when you have once installed Valero, but the Valero COI, you need to install Valero, and then when you do, for example, Valero get backups, it gives you a little bit more detailed or more information, which Scott is gonna demonstrate later on. So the, the, the thing is, you do uh, Valero uh, create backup, and that talks to the kube API. Kube API verifies everything, creates a new, new object, new, new resource, for example, backup, and then the Valero controller reads these events, and when such events happens, it's reconciling and it's running the flow for backup, for example. So that means you say, I wanna backup that namespace with all the resources there. So if you dump the resources, you dump, for example, the PVs and store it somewhere on the, on the S3 bucket. The other way is when you do the restore, it's gonna read from the S3 bucket and restore. So maybe you're asking the question now, Okay, why I should use Valero instead of just kubectl get pods, whatever, hyphen o, yaml, uh, because you have to clean a lot, which means when you dump everything, your resources, there'll be statuses, metadata that are okay, but you have to clean them, and some of them maybe will stop you to reproduce that on somewhere, somewhere else. And also, with that, you cannot get the data out so you have to figure out some other way to dump the, the PVs and then do whatever you're gonna do with them. So with that, um, how we back up the, 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 the PVs, we have something called uh, plugins or providers. So that's the way how Valero talks with the underlying infrastructure, for example, AWS, and in, it's using the native methods to backup, so to do snapshot, for example. So there are two types of uh, providers in our space. Um, one is Valero supported, and the other one is called community supported, which is kind of strange. I mean, Valero is a community project, so what means Valero supported? It means the maintainers cannot support every flavor of provider out there, so th there should be some uh, subset of things that we say, yeah, we work for th with this one for sure, Rest, if you want it, yeah, work with us. We will support you, but we cannot say we work with them and they're fully supported. So go on our website, check, and you see uh, the different features. And yeah, that's my wife uh, wishing me luck. I thought I, I forgot this, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so um, PV backups. Um, there are a few ways to do uh, PV backup. So the cloud native way is to use the underlying cloud platform and to do, for example, EBS snapshots. But sometimes you may not run in the cloud or you want to do something else with that, your data or you don't want to rely on the underlying um, cloud. So we have RESTIC. Uh, RESTIC is a file system level backup. And I'm not uh, talking about CSI right now because Scott is going to demonstrate that, but I want to touch on RESTIC. For example, if you have something that is running on AWS, uh, or e or GK, whatever, and you wanna transfer that on-prem or the other way around, you have to find a way to transfer that data. And one of the ways is to use RESTIC. So you have your PVs, bless you, and, and you can backup that, um, backup all the resources, plus the data which will be uploaded into your S3 bucket, and then when you install Valero on the destination cluster, you can read from that S3 bucket and restore everything on the new cluster. Am I missing something? No, oh, that's it. Good. So with that, uh, I'll give the to Scott to do the demo. I'm not sure how we can work yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so here, um, I've got a cluster that I had set up. It's an EKS cluster uh, running, let's see here, it's uh, Kubernetes 121 uh, and, and AWS, and got Valero installed here. Um, and 
Valero 1.9 just got released today. Um, what I'm running here for the demo was kind of a pre-release uh, about two weeks ago, kind of uh, code base, because that's what was available then. Um, we're going to look now at the Valero namespace to see what's running there. And you see the Valero deployment. Um, we mentioned that that handles all the essential components of Valero, backups, restores. Oh, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a video, so I'm yeah, not sure. Know, there we I'm not sure we can zoom more than that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's all, all we can do here. Um, and, and then we also see those three um, other pods. The, the Damon said that's the that's the REST component. That's the an optional component, um, but you need that if you're going to be doing the file system restore. Um, and that's run as a Damon set because we've got to be able to run that pod on the same node that your um, pod is running and that has that mounted volume. Um, and then. What I've got installed here, let's see in a second, is the, the basic, Word, oh, basic WordPress um, uh, demo app. So, oh, so it's not going to under. Here we go. Yeah, so, um, and it's basically got, um, let's see in a second here, uh, two different deployments. It's got the database front end and the, so the, the front end and the database back end. So this is uh, in, that, in that namespace there. We've got um, WordPress running. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to go um, to the web UI and create a blog post, um, and then we're going to back it up. I was just showing here, the, yeah, we've got the two PVCs, um, one for the database and one for the front end. Um, those will also be backed up and restored here. So we're creating a new post. Publish that now and view the post. I'm just going to go ahead and add a comment. Um, so we'll, we'll see all this should show up when we restore it um, in a few minutes. So now we're going to go and actually create that backup using the Valero CLI. Um, and the basic backup, you can give, we're just giving it a namespace, uh, taking all the other defaults. Um, so we're just going to do a Valero backup create, give it a name, and the namespaces. And you can do a whole cluster backup with that if you don't uh, specify the include. Yeah, I forgot the name there, so I'm just redoing it. And if you don't specify that, then you can back up all namespaces. Uh, and there's a bunch of other ways you can tweak it, including cluster scope resources or not, um, label selectors if you want to just do a subset of your namespaces. Uh, and you can also just create the CRs directly if you have more um, specific uh, needs there or you have some tool that's creating those. So we've created the backup. Uh, the Valero pod um, is now running through. It um, sees the new backup in the queue and start backing up that namespace. Uh, we'll use the Valero CLI again to look at the current backups. I'm just waiting here to give it a chance to run the backup. And so we just get a list of backups. This is going to show all the backups that are in that bucket if you're, for your backup storage location. So if you have multiple clusters sharing the same S3 bucket, um, you might see additional backups from other clusters. Um, this is the one we just backed up WordPress demo. It's completed. I'm going to use that um, backup describe from CLI. This gives you a list of all the resources that um, were included in the backup. Um, and then you can also see there were you know, 53 items backed up. Um, status, if there were warnings or errors, you'd see the uh, information about those as well. So now I'm just going to add another comment um, post backup. So we'll see when we do the restore, it's going to be the data that was there um, at that point. So this post backup comment should not appear um, in the restored cluster, in the restored namespace, rather. So now we're going to delete the namespace, which will get rid of uh, the pods, the deployments, uh, the volumes, and everything there. Um, and yes, as Erlen mentioned, um, we're using the CSI plugin here. Um, it's actually using Rook's Ceph uh, CSI driver. So we're using the Valero CSI plugin for 
um, doing that uh, backup and restore. Um, and if you're using EBS or something with a native uh, cloud snapshot uh, provider, then uh, then we have, and it's a plugin for it, um, whether it's one of those supported ones or one of those community supported ones, then you can do that as well. Um, also mentioned here that there's one, and I'm just reloading the page here, you see it's, it, it was, it's stalling there, it's not loading. Um, so now we're gonna, do, I'm gonna look in the namespace and there's nothing there. Um, so now it's time to create the restore. Uh, and again, the basic defaults for the CLI for the restore, you, you gotta tell what backup you're restoring from and that's all you need for a basic restore. You can also restore some subset from a backup, specify resources to exclude, use a label selector there as well. So we're just um, restoring the whole backup from, you know, so we give it a name and then from backup WordPress demo. Um, uh, but yeah, the, as, as mentioned on the, it, with, with, the, the with the plugins, um, um, it, Pretty much any provider that has a plugin that you can install for um, the snap, that has a snapshot or plugin, then you can use those native snapshots um, for for the restore as well, or for the, for the backup and restore as well. Then we're going to do a little list on the restore, um, and the restores are different from the backups in the sense that they're only local to the cluster. So you have a shared S3 store that'll distribute your backups across, but you're only going to see the restores from this cluster. Um, but if you had another cluster that is using the same backup store, then you could back it up in this cluster and then restore it in another cluster. Maybe you want to maybe have a second cluster that you want to mirror the content from your current cluster with some scheduled set of backing ups from backups from one cluster and restores to the other. Uh, we see here that this was completed. Um, I'm going to show one of the um, so so the restore completed at this point. What's happening is um, Valero has run through and actually created all the Kubernetes resources in the cluster. Um, and the application should be initializing. Uh, we're just gonna look at another feature from the CLI, the backup logs. You can look at backup and restore logs. Those are stored in, in S3 as well. So even if the Valero pod has gone down uh, and been re restarted, these, these logs get preserved um, as long as the backup is still, still there. Um, and the logs can be useful, especially if you get warnings or errors, obviously, but also if there's some resource that you expected to be restored and you don't see it, you can check the logs. Uh, any plugin that you've added might have some content of the logs, like this one saying it's skipping the resource because it's cluster scoped. Um, and if you're doing a single namespace backup, then we don't include all the cluster scoped resources unless you've explicitly set that on as, as a CLI option. Um, and I should bring up another, uh, Orlin mentioned uh, plugins for the storage, both for the object store and for um, volume snapshots. But there's another type of plugins that um, people use as well, and that's the um, backup item action and restore item action restores. This lets you define custom behaviors for specific resource types. You know, maybe, in fact, um, you know, maybe you wanna modify certain um, attributes either on backup or on restore for, for secrets or for pods. Um, you can also specify dependencies to say anytime you backup in a resource A, also include B and C. Um, and those get pulled into the backup as well. Um, and the same on restore. You can specify dependencies that way. On restore, you can also um, pull things out of the backup, and, and, and your plugin might say, "Oh, if you know spec, if this spec field is true, then I want to skip this thing, and then we'll then, then we'll just completely skip that item from the restore." All that can be done from plugins. Um, so I'm just trying to reload this now. That the application is still um, uh, initializing. Um, in another minute, we'll see that it should be there. Um, on the OpenShift team, we have a, a, a project, OADP, which is kind of bringing in Valero into the OpenShift world. And one of the things we're doing with that is we have a, uh, several plugins that we've created um, for OpenShift-specific um, resource types, as well as uh, even for, custom, for, for standard Kubernetes types that have OpenShift-specific behavior um, that we may want to do certain things, clear certain fields. Um, we've got plugins that do that. Um, and um, so that's one thing, and, and, and pretty much, when you install Valero, you can you can add any plugin you want. It's just a, there's, again, there's a CLI option for um, Valero plugin add. Um, those get created as a, added as init containers on the Valero pod. Um, plugins and Valero communicate via gRPC. And this should load shortly. I think it's almost up. It's just the WordPress takes a little while for everything to get up and ready to go. Um, 
yeah, we're actually pretty close to it. You should see this load and should see that that post backup comment is not there. Yeah, here it is, hit the sites up again, post restore, look at the post, and we see that initial comment before the backup, but that other one was not, because we restored the contents that as they existed before then. So, All ready right. to go in there? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, for some reason, many folks are trying to <coughs> wish me luck today. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so next thing, uh, I want to talk about community. And that's my role as a community manager to uh, encourage folks to join us. So how many of you are contributing daily on open source? Can, can someone raise a hand? Okay. And how many of you wants to start contributing? I'm not talking about code. I'm talking about everything like documentation, ideas. Nobody? Okay, great. So <laughs> I think, uh, I think um, our community is quite vibrant and, and very welcoming to join. So very the boring starts, stats. Uh, we have like uh, 6,000 stars on GitHub, um, more than 1,000 forks. More importantly, we have uh, more than 230 contributors active. And by contributors, I don't mean folks that are contributing code or documentation. Super active Slack channels and people are asking questions and people are joining discussions so if you if you feel like joining this kind of community, I'll show I'll show you later on how. So we have seven maintainers. Uh, even though that the project was started uh, initiated Heftio and then VMware, not all the maintainers are VMware. Uh, we have Scott, uh, we have Dave from Casten, so we have a good bunch of uh, maintainers from different organizations, and yeah, we're all across the globe. Uh, we have folks in China. And in the US, I'm in Bulgaria, we have folks in Canada as well. So if you want to join that diverse and all around the globe community, join us. So a part of the maintainers, that's our contributors. So you can see Zuzi are, are supporting us, SAP, Dell, and of course the community. And if you take a look at the graph of the contributions, it's 50-50, one, one 50 side percent is all these organizations. The other 50% is unidentified organizations. Either the folks are not filling up their affiliation with their organization, or they're just not affiliated to any organization. So uh, I'll say that's a very strong um, indicator that the community is healthy and the project is healthy because we have um, very diverse contributions from different parts of the world and, and organizations. So. Um, how you can get a vote and why community is important. It's important because that's how it's built the, it's in the project. So the, even, I'm, I'm gonna repeat that, even it's a ex VMware project and VMware is doing a lot of stuff, the rest is done by the community and is doing um, by, by folks who are um, spending their, their time to work on this one, so thank you very much. Um, if you want to start your journey into our project, you can check our governance. It's a well-described document how you can start contributing and how you can uh, become a contributor and then maintainer. And, uh, and ask for everyone, if, if you're using Valero, uh, reach out to me. I want to talk to you. I want to talk about your programs. I want to talk how you implemented it, what kind of issues you have, and what kind of features you want. So we have a, a doctor's file. So feel free to fill in if you, if you feel like it. So how we can help you, uh, that QR code is my Twitter. I'm open for, um, for, for DMs. So if you feel like chatting with me, just get in touch with me. Um, Valero.io is the website, and that's the uh, GitHub under the VMware Tanzu. And how you can join us, we do um, almost every week, okay, every week, we have a community meeting, just alternating between um, US and China-ish uh, uh, friendly time zone. And the other week we do US and European-ish uh, <laughs> friendly time zone. So you, sh you can match easily in some of these two, two meetings. Um, we have a Google group. So 
if you're interested to receive our newsletters, I promise I won't spam you a lot. It's like one or two messages uh, per month, I suppose. It's not very active though. Slack is much more active. And talking about Slack, uh, we, you can find us in the uh, Kubernetes space. We have two Slack channels, two main Slack channels. One is Dev. If you feel like you want to start developing and want to contribute, Valero Dev is the place to join. But if you're a user and you want to ask questions about how to implement and how to solve specific problems, Valero Users is the other one. We have a bunch of folks a answering questions every day. It's a very active Slack channel, and you can find that uh, a lot of information there. Um, how to interact with us, you can follow the Twitter uh, for Valero and you can receive the uh, news. So with that said, talking about news, we just released a few hours ago, uh, one nine. Um, that slide was, uh, previously it was roadmap, but now it's released, so it's no more roadmap, it's <laughs> done. So th those are a few of the main features that we, we've accomplished in that, uh, in that release. Um, I don't want to go every one of them. Maybe, maybe Scott, if you want to touch on some, some of the main ones. Yeah, just to mention a couple of them. I mean, CSI plugin is a big one because that, that, that kind of gives us more, um, you know, more ability to work uh, with a great, greater you know, variety of storage providers. Um, so that, that's, 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 that's pretty important. Um, the other ones are a lot of kind of incremental updates. The existing resource policy is just one where normally when we restore, if the resource is already there, we ignore it. We only create new things. but it's kind of a problem for use cases where you want to create a kind of live backup, um, so you want to update things, and so this allows us to actually update existing items. Um, and then, you know, again, there's other incremental features, better testing, um, refactor controllers using a newer framework. Um, kind of just, just that, that's more kind of de developer focused, making it easier on the rest of us for maintaining. Um, yeah, if yeah. you have questions of some of this, we can answer that in the yes. Q and A session. Um, we are building the roadmap for 110. So everything is public, everything is in GitHub, everything is in YouTube, if you wanna follow the community meetings, recordings, or if you wanna add, we have a discussion in GitHub. Uh, if, you, if, if you wanna have feature that we don't have it right now, just drop a line there. We can discuss it, we can set up like countless calls about discussing the new architectures, new features. So we just need your feedback and your input so we can make Valero better about the release date, I think we cannot share that right now. <laughs> With that, thank you very much. Uh, I think we're at the end. So, do we have time for Q and A? Great. So, if was that? Oh, great. Oh, we were fast. Okay. All right. So, uh, feel free to ask questions. Are there any questions on the live stream uh, thing? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, if no questions, I have a question. Do you want a t-shirt or sticker? If yes, over here. <laughs> okay. Thank you everyone. Bye. Yeah, thank you.